What's up guys? It's Steve, back with another CG Geek tutorial. Today I'll be giving an introduction on uh, video editing in Blender 2.71. So video editing in Blender is very possible and uh, it's just a little bit different than you might be used to and that is why I think a lot of people are kind of afraid of using Blender's video editor. But uh, for about the last week now I've been kind of getting myself familiar with it and it is very capable of doing quite a bit of stuff uh, as long as you know what you're doing. So um, that's why I'm doing this introduction today and uh, I hope you guys find it helpful. So let's just jump into the video editor. I'm going to switch from default view over to video editing. And you see we have our video editor. We have our, uh, our timeline down here with our strips in it where you can add your strips. We have our graph editor for editing like audio and such. And we have our viewer here for uh, viewing our footage. Now, this uh, timeline right now is set up in frames. And if we want to change that to time, I think all we have to do is go Control T, and that's, well, frames right now, Control T, and zoom out a little bit, we have seconds. Control T, we have frames. So that is how you change from frames to seconds with Control T. So I'm going to leave it at seconds for now. Let's scale out a little bit. And let's just give it a thousand frames for now to work in. So uh, I'm going to be importing a little bit of footage that I have. Now, um, Blender accepts a lot of different types of footage, but in case it doesn't to, uh, allow you to import your footage, there's many applications out there for converting your footage, like MPEG Stream Clip for one. That's the one I use mostly, and it's a free application that you can convert your footage to anything you want and then import it into Blender. So I'm just going to start by going Add movie. So Blender doesn't have a media browser basically like you might be attuned to if you're using say iMovie or Final Cut. Um, it has basically this screen which is your import screen but it can almost act like a media browser. If you uh, choose this little box up here you can see displays of your footage and uh, all the footage in the folder that you're in and uh, so that works pretty well for importing footage and uh, with this you don't really need a media browser. So I'm going to start by importing, oh, maybe this clip. This is a flyover of a scene that I have just made recently, where uh, basically I'll just play it here. The camera zooms over my island here. Pretty slow, but it's uh, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, you can see that Blender plays it at about 20 FPS. And that is the first time playing through. If I play it a second time through now, it's cached in and it's playing at a solid 24 FPS. So Blender basically caches in your footage every time you play it to be able to play it back smooth and fluid. But um, right now this is limited to whatever I have set in my user preferences. So I'm going to go to my user preferences and uh, allow it more RAM so I can cache in more frames into my RAM and have smooth playback. So this will also depend on the amount of RAM you have. But I'm going to go to System here, scroll down, and you have Sequencer slash Clip Editor. Memory cache limit. Right now it's set to just a gigabyte. I'm going to give it 496, which should be 4 gigabytes and uh, should work a lot better at uh, and caching a lot more footage into my RAM and have smooth playback. So that will be good. Now, first off, what are we going to do with this footage? Well, typical thing that you might do with footage is, say, fade it in. So say I want this to fade in. Um, I go to frame 1. And you might be thinking, like, well, is there, like, transitions I can add or something? Well, there is, actually. There's some transitions. If you go Shift-A, you can go down to Effect Strip, and you have all these different options, one of them being Cross. This is called Cross Dissolve in, like, Final Cut or iMovie. And uh, so I'm going to use the Cross Dissolve to fade in. But um, first I need to tell it what to fade in from. So um, I'm going to add some black in the beginning here. But to do that, I need to move my footage. And to do this, I'm just going to hold G, and then I can move my footage along my timeline here. And if I wanted to shorten or lengthen my footage, I would right-click one of these end hooks here, and then hit G, and I can drag that in or out. That blue line you see above my footage is the actual length of the footage, and this bar is how much of it will be used. So that is cool. Um, I want the full footage for now, though, so I'm just going to drag it back to there. And same with the other side. Just hit G, and you can drag it along, you right click on the center of your footage and you can move the whole clip like so. 
So I'm going to go to frame 1, hit Shift A, add an effect strip, and just a basic color. This will be black, but I can change the color over here if I want to. I want to leave it as black right now though. And I'm basically going to transition from black into my clip as a fade. So what I'm going to do is, where do I want my footage to start? Oh, like right there. I'm going to move my footage over that, just something like that. So we have black, and then we have that. I'm going to go shift, I'm going to first hold right click and select my black, then hold shift and click select my footage, then go shift A, effect strip, cross. And you just think, you might think, well, I don't see anything. But basically it's there, you just have to pull your footage back now, and the amount you pull it back will be the amount of transition you get. Alright, so I'm just going to pull that back about, oh, a second or so. And if I play this through, it will be black, and then it will fade to my footage. Nice. But you can see that the footage is held frozen here, and that's just because the clip doesn't extend that far right now. So to fix this, I would go like that, overlay this more, and pull this back with G. So pull back the footage. You can see we have some footage here now. If I move the whole clip in, then the footage goes all the way to the beginning, and it will be a smooth dissolve with the motion. There you go. So as long as you have the footage under here, it shows that there's this much footage that will be in the cross dissolve. So that is cool. And you get a nice fade from black to your clip. And that is, uh, that's how you do a fade. Now, what about doing something like a, what about speeding your footage up? Okay, that's something that I like to do quite a bit. And uh, how do you do that in Blender? Well, I'm going to start by trimming my footage because I want the first part of this clip sped up and then I want like normal speed at the end here. So to do this, I'm going to split my clip. So with the clip selected, I'm just going to go strip, and then I'm going to go cut hard at frame. You can also use shift K to do this, and it will split your footage right there. You can see you have two different clips now, but it is split right there. That was good. So now I'm going to change the speed of this clip. So to do this, I'm going to select it, go shift A, effect strip, and we're going to choose speed control. Now you see you get this effect strip up here, which is cool. And uh, with this effect strip selected, if you go to your edit strip settings over here, you can scroll down to right here, where you have your effect strip settings, and you have multiply speed. This will basically multiply the amount of frames used in a second in uh, this strip here. So I'm going to go 6. I want to multiply it about 6 times faster than it is right now. So with my effect strip selected, and go multiply speed 6. Now you might be confused because this doesn't change length like it does in some edit other editing software, but no need to worry. It is sped up and then it just freezes at after 6 times the amount of frames basically. So then it's just a still frame after that point instead of trimming all that off. So that's cool. Now you can see that um, the beginning part here where I have it cross dissolve, whoops, I'm sorry. The beginning part here where I have it cross dissolve is not being sped up. So for now, I'm just going to delete this transition, erase that strip, and pull that all the way to the beginning. One, right there. Oop, not that. Command Z. Command Z is your friend if you have something like that. I'm just going to hit B, box select all my footage, and pull it back a little bit so I have some room to work. Now I can pull it all the way out to the end of my footage. So we have it all sped up. And you can see it's jumpy. But now if I play it back after it cashed in, it's nice and smooth. So that's exactly what I want. Now I'm just going to take this end part of footage, or part of my footage, and drag it over here where my motion stops. So I'm going to go frame by frame. Here's motion. There's none. So go to that point and drag my clip up to there. Now you can see you have it sped up. Here we go. Sped up, and then boom, nice and smooth. So that's kind of a cool effect, and that's how you change the speed in Blender. So if I wanted to add that transition back over here, I would just pull this back a little bit, box select all this, hook it up to there, select my black, shift select my click, uh, my footage with left right click, shift A, effect strip, cross, and then we can pull this black back to reveal our transition. Very good. If we play this through, we have a nice fade and then speed. Again, this uh, this transition does not work with the speed change right there. So 
That's, you know, the price you pay if you want to use a transition like this. But there's another method of doing this, which will allow us to do that, I believe. So, whoops, don't do that. Grab this, pull it out to the left. Oh, why is it doing that? I'm just going to hit Command Z a few times. Then I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to grab that out to there. Very good. So, if I wanted to transition this without using the effect strip and keep my speed as I have here, what I would do is animate the opacity over here. So to do this, all these settings are animatable. So I'll just go hit I on my opacity. First change it to zero, hit I, and jump to, oh, maybe a second into it here, and change it to one, and hit I. Then go back to the beginning, and you can see that this changes over time. And you can see I have this new opacity setting in my graph editor, and this is basically my fate. So if I play this through, whoa, excuse me, that's, uh, all right, it's not changing the fade, and that might also be because of this effect strip. Let me just delete this for now, and we'll see if that works. All right, there we go. So the speed change doesn't seem to work with the uh, with the transitions. That's okay. But um, yeah. Alright, so now that we have that nice fade, we will add uh, some more footage to this. So I don't need this end part, I'll be cutting it before then. So I'm just going to put this at the beginning, like so. And let's add in another clip at the end here. So I'm going to go to the last frame, hit Shift A, add movie, and click that little browser there. Alright, um, I'll take this shot. So you can see now it will be a rough cut from this shot to that shot. And I'd like a little cross dissolve there. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to first pull back this footage a little bit to leave some frames to work with in the transition. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Now I'm going to move them both in so you can see I have the footage overlapping enough for a nice transition. I'm going to select my first scene or shot and shift right click my second one. Now I can go shift A, add effect strip, cross. And I have the nice cross dissolve there. And if I play this through, It'll fade nicely between the clips. So I'm just going to do this for another shot here. Shift A, add a movie. Let's do... And I'm going to add this strip in. This is my wide shot. And I want to transition between these two as well. I'm going to go G, pull it back, G, pull it back, and line it up just like the other one. Select this one first. Shift, right-click that one. Shift, add an effect strip. And you know what? Let's try a wipe, just uh, for learning's sake. If I do that, I'll now have a wipe effect between these two, where it does a pan like that. And this wipe effect has a few uh, settings here, like I can blur the wipe here if I want to, and uh, change the angle and such. So that is cool. That's another way to do a transition in Blender. Very good. Now maybe just a simple fade out to black. So what I do is grab this. Pull it back so I have some footage to work with. Shift A, add a blank color. Drag this one out all the way to the end. Select this, shift select that with right click, and shift A, add in, cross dissolve. Let's pull this black back out like I had it before. And you'll see we have a fade to black. Very nice. Now what if I wanted to put, say, a title at the end here? Well, you can also open images in Blender here. You can't add text, but you can open text images, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move my cursor, oh, right around here. I'm going to add image, and I have some of my CG Geek assets here. So I'm going to add in CG, and you can see I have this with an alpha background, and it's not on top of my black, and it's just floating. So I'm going to change a few settings real quick on my CG Geek footage here. I'm going to change the blend from cross over to alpha over. And you can see there we have it over black. Now to put this in uh, its own frame and not its own, uh, have its own basically size and shape, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click image offset. And you can see that puts it as its own thing in my frame. Now I can use these X and Y settings to position it on my frame. 
So that's cool. I'll do that. I'll uh, go to the same spot and go Shift A, add in another image, grab in my mouthpiece. I'm going to do the same things. <laughs> mouthpiece, my geek piece. Switch blend over to alpha over and click image offset and move it to the right spot with my X and Y settings here. So I can just do that. And I can just do that. So that is how you add in text in Blender. I could add a fade to this. I could even animate these X and Y settings if I wanted them to say come in from the top or bottom. So basically I would go have this one. I'll have this one come in from the bottom and this one come in from the top. So I put this down at the bottom at frame one of this shot. I'll hit I on my Y, jump in, put it back up where I want it, and hit I again. And then I'll select my CG Geek part. I'll hit I on my Y here, and then I'll jump to the beginning like so, and pull that up. And that's good. And I'll hit I one more time. Now if I play this through, you'll see it goes... Very nice. You can animate tile, titles that way, and uh, things work very nice. And you can also see if I select my footage here, I have this offset as a graph line in my graph editor if I wanted to change it here at all. But I don't. Pretty happy with that. I'll just drag this out to the end of the black here. Now the final thing is what if I wanted to add some sound or music to this. You can see I have a nice fade in. I have nice transitions from scene to scene, and I have my end title. So what if I wanted to add some music? Well, to do this, I would just go Shift A, add sound, and for this I'm going to use some YouTube music. Um, I'll just grab accidents will happen. This is just a simple track. So here's my music track and uh, I want it to be at the bottom because that's what I'm more familiar with in video editing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B. B. Uh, click on my sequence editor here. Hit B. Select everything. Move it up a frame or a channel. They call them uh, these different layers of channels. And I'm going to grab my music and bring it to the bottom one then. Now it's way too loud right off the bat. So what I'm going to do is move it to the beginning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the volume right here down to just be a 0.1. Don't want it very loud, just background music. And uh, I have this fade here, but I want to add some black in the beginning. Because if you listen to this track, it takes a little while to come in. And uh, it's coming in at the end. I think I'm going to make it a little bit quieter yet. Maybe a 0 0.06. Delete the one, 0 0.06. And I'm also going to click Draw Waveform. So you can see you have a few sound options over here. You have your volume, your pitch, and your pan. And this is all animatable. So this is how we're going to fade our volume up and down for our music. So yes, I want to, uh, I want to have my clip start with the music here at this part where you can see in the uh, waveform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B, select all my footage, and drag it up to about here. And you can see this is where I have my opacity fade in on this clip. So I'm going to take it to about there. I'm going to, on this track, Shift A, add a effect strip. Whoop, shift A, add effect strip, color. And I want this black to be just underlaying my whole scene. So when I fade, it's fading from black. Uh, although it wasn't quite fading from black. It's just because I need to go select this, blend, and alpha over. Now it's fading from black. There we go. So this is the second way to do a fade. The first one is what I showed you in the beginning, where I can, let me just quick show you again. I'm going to do it real quick. And Option I, delete the last uh, keyframe I put there. Option I, delete the first keyframe. Pull this footage back a bit, so you can see it's not at the start of it. Pull this back, move it up to here, and match it up to there. Now, actually, I'm just going to drag it back to there at the uh, start of my footage here. You can see that underline. I'm going to select this one, shift select this one, and shift A, add cross dissolve. So that's another way to do it. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, and I'm pretty happy about that. I can change this back to cross and not alpha over. Put that through. Uh, hang on, why is this? Oh, the opacity is at zero. Turn the opacity to one. 
Very good. Now, um, I want this music to fade out at the end here. So it comes in nicely, but I want to have a nice fade out at the end here. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to scroll down, select my audio track first, and I'm going to go to my volume settings here. I'm going to hit I, and that will put a keyframe in. Then I'll jump to about here, and I'll make it even quieter, so just like a point zero two. Hit I again, and you'll see I have this volume setting in my graph editor. If I use the mouse wheel to scroll out, I have these volume, uh, basically bars, you might call it in like Final Cut or iMovie, but they're graph editor handles, and I can adjust the volume with them if I wanted to change the angle of the fade or anything like that. I don't want to, and if I play the music now, or the whole movie, you'll hear it fades down at the end, 2.2. So that is how you change ramp and lower and higher the volume in Blender's Video Sequence Editor. So that's cool, and uh, that is how you do that. I wasn't sure for a while on how to do that, and I just figured that out recently. But I'd share that with you guys. So that should cover the basics of video editing in Blender's Video Sequence Editor. I hope this little walkthrough tutorial has been uh, helpful and maybe you learned something. Uh, if you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Alright, it's all cashed in now and it's playing smooth. Bye-bye, guys.